Hello everyone, welcome back to my Game of Thrones Season 9 fanfiction. Uh, we are at episode 3, Blood of the Dragon, which will take about 52 minutes. Alright, last episode ended with, uh, overall it was a good episode, it was really this, uh, you know, uh, feel-good uh, episode where we see how everyone's prospering, how everyone's happy, the celebration of the one-year anniversary of how Stargarian is in full process. But it ended in absolute tragedy when um, the assassination attempt at Queen Daenerys took place. But it actually ended up killing Missande instead. Missande, of course, being Daenerys' best her best friend. Uh, so it really ended with this uh, shocker twist, if I can name it that way. And yeah, we'll just have to see how everything goes uh, from that point on. So I suggest we jump right into episode 3, Blood of the Dragon. King's Landing. A funeral is held for Missande. Daenerys, Jon, Tyrion, Varys, Gendry, Theon, Brienne, and several others are all present. As, as Missande's body is being burned, Daenerys again starts to cry. Tyrion says a few words. Afterwards, Jon asks Varys if he can see the one who did it. Varys takes Jon to the, to the dungeons, where the servant who poisoned and served the wine is being tortured by some soldiers. John has a conversation with the servant that tries to figure out his motives. The servant makes a statement that he, that he will never bow before a foreign invader, someone who has no respect for traditions and culture, someone who in his eyes is here to rob them of their heritage. Before John leaves, the servant states that he is just one man of a whole organization and that there are many more who rather see the queen dead or gone than alive and ruling over them. John visits Daenerys in her chambers. He tries to comfort her but fails as she is struck too hard with grief. Tyrion comes to ask Daenerys to come to the council room, but John decides to go in her place instead. In the council room stands the civil council, Varys, Tyrion and Brienne. The civil council tell them that there were numerous fights and brawls in the, in the streets last night during the celebration. The city watch was able to arrest or kill most of the protesters. Varys and Tyrion also ensure that all the people who were working in the Red Keep are being interrogated and checked. Brienne feels partially guilty since she was in command of security, but Tyrion tells her that no one could have known what was going to happen. John mentions uh, that the captured servant said that there is a whole organization that wants uh, to oppose and dethrone Daenerys, but they can't just let that happen. Tyrion suggests that Brienne takes the city watch and that she scans the entire city and searches every house. Varys mentions that if the people behind the assassination attempt notice any resistance from the Queen, that things can get violent again very soon. Brienne shows no fear and is fully committed on proving herself to Daenerys and set things right. Gendry and Theon walk around the castle and have a conversation about what happened last night. They both know that the Queen won't let this go unanswered. In the Reach, Jaime is discussing their next move together with the other commanders. A raven arrives from King's Landing in which the assassination attempt is mentioned. He informs everyone with the news. He visits the prisoners again in an attempt to find the location of the camp of the rebels. Suddenly, one of the prisoners asks how the celebration went in King's Landing, indicating that he knew about the assassination attempt. Jaime interrogates the prisoner, but he only gives vague answers, under which he also mentions that, there are, that they are all one big resistance force, and that they are everywhere. That last sentence worries Jamie, and he immediately sends Raven back to King's Landing, warning them about the potential spies and assassins. In King's Landing, the Raven is received by Varys and informs John and Tyrion about the news. John searches for Daenerys and eventually finds her near the cliffs with Drogon. He tries to comfort her by saying that they are taking necessary action. She eventually tells him that she wants to meet the servant. John takes her to the dungeons, where Daenerys confronts the servant, who is still being held captive. The servant again starts to make threats and also mentions that they have so-called freedom fighters everywhere, and not just with Daenerys herself, but also with all who follow her. John confirms this by telling Daenerys about the raven they had received. Daenerys leaves with John. John, of course, is worried about her safety and thinks that the threats are far more serious as they first thought. After all, there might be more people in the Red Keep who want her dead. 
After a serious conversation about their safety, he suggests that she comes to Winterfell with him for the time being. It's dangerous for her here and far up north might be the safest place for her now, at least until the city is secured by Brienne and the City Watch. Daenerys, however, wants to stay here since she can't give the rebels what they want. Her gone. She has a better idea, she says, before walking off. Gendry, Theon and the other bannermen are being warned about the infiltration of the rebels in their own ranks and armies. Tyrion suggests that all the bannermen return to their castles and bring their troops here to the keep, thus making the Red Keep a huge stronghold for protecting the Queen. If they unmask all the infiltrators inside the Red Keep and then gather all their men there, the Red Keep is the safest place to be. Everyone agrees and Gendry, Theon and all the other bannermen return to their castles. In the Reach, Jaime also feels like he should warn Bronn, since he has received his wealth and castle thanks to Daenerys, thus making him sons some sort of an ally of her. Since they have no ravens anymore, Jaime writes a letter to Bronn asking him to be cautious and potentially come to their base camp for safety. He gives the letter to Podrick, who then writes for Highgarden. In King's Landing, Varys visits the servant in the dungeons. He offers him his life if he is willing to give him all the information about the resistance. After hearing that the punishment for his crime will be beheading, he definitely refuses since it will be a quick and painless death anyway. Varys eventually leaves right before some unsullied guards come to get the servant and bring him to justice. In the courtyard of the Red Keep stand Daenerys, Jon, Varys, Tyrion, Brienne, the entire City Watch and all of the civilians who want to see the trial. Daenerys officially sentences the servant to death after which he starts to threaten Daenerys once more, after, after which he readies himself to be beheaded. Suddenly, Daenerys, however, signals Drogon, who lands in the courtyard next to the servants. Varys and Tyrion remind Daenerys that this is not what was agreed upon, and that the normal punishment for attempt of regicide is beheading. Daenerys answers that the people need to learn the consequences of their actions. She signals Drogon, who then brutally devours a screaming servant in front of everyone. Daenerys walks away as everyone else stands still and watches the brutal scene in front of them. Alright, that was episode 3, Blood of a Dragon. Uh, again, a slightly more slow episode, but as I mentioned before, uh, my season 9, at least in the beginning, is a slightly more slow-paced episode. But I don't think that necessarily is a bad thing, since uh, the early seasons of the actual show also were very slow-paced. Um, uh, that being said, it's not that doesn't mean that there are not important things that happened in this in this episode. Of course, this episode is kind of an after, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, an epilogue to uh, what happened at the end of last episode. You know, Daenerys is in full grief over the loss of her best friend. John and Ferris, Tyrion, and Brienne, and everyone, of course, tries their best to uh, secure uh, the Red Keep and the city, and try to, you know, correct their mistakes. Because, of course, they kind of, like, sort of let their guard down at the during the festivities. Uh, of course, the plan has been made. Brienne has to take the city watch and clear out the entire city. Um, that being said, it's also revealed that this wasn't just one uh, lonesome assassin, but it's actually. Uh, revealed that this assassin uh, w is was actually part of an entire group of spies and assassins uh, who were also uh, was also among the same group of uh, of the rebel army, wh which is revealed when Jamie interrogates uh, the prisoners again in his uh, in his uh, military camp. So yeah, that's that was pretty much the big discovery of this episode that the, all the assassins, you know, the rebel army, the spies, the assassins, they're all under one roof, if you can uh, say it like that. They're all in one group. Yeah, and of course now a lot of actions have to be have to be made. Uh, it ends with the execution of the assassin, um, which actually sort of got out of hand because of course the um, sentence for regicide is beheading. Uh, but it ends actually with the narrative signaling Drogon out of nowhere. It really is supposed to be an out of nowhere moment that Drogon enters and just. Well, brutally eats uh, eats the assassin in front of everyone. Uh, of course, she is a dragon queen, so it's kind of so it's kind of um, uh, logical that we, she would carry out sentences with uh, Drogon because she has done it before in the in the past. 
but it wasn't that was agreed upon as uh, Varys and Tyrion mentioned right before uh, Drogon eats the, eats the assassin so it really ends with this image where everyone standing there you know John, Brienne, Varys, Tyrion and everyone present really has something like oh oh like oh shit <laughs> this, 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 that was really brutal that was not what we thought that that, that would happen but of course Daenerys being well furious at, at over the loss of her best friend she you know of course the dragon inside her if i can uh, name it like that dragon inside of her came out again and she went just full dracarys in a sort of way on on that assassin so yeah that was her way of uh, getting a payback also just slightly ever so slightly hinting as that mad queen uh, that is brewing inside of her. Um, all right, that being uh, of course, uh, also jo- uh, Jamie has sent uh, Podrick to Bronn, uh, also warning him, so also hinting that Bronn is going to make a return. Uh, for the rest, I think that's all that has, that has happened in this episode. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for episode four tomorrow, and I'll see you guys later.